We are in week, right? Six of a series. We are calling anyone. Come and shout out. The Advantage. So most of you don't know, if you're, you're part of a series called The Advantage, if you don't know, you should go back and check out the sermons that we've been doing for the past six weeks. So we are in week six, okay? The Advantage. What is the Advantage? Jesus talks about the Advantage. Uh, when he says in John chapter 16, verse 7, he says like this. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Jesus clearly said that he's going to go away and when he goes away, we need something on the face of this earth. And he says, I'll send you my helper. And he says, this is for your advantage. And we've been studying how the Holy Spirit is an advantage in our lives. Week one, we saw how the Holy Spirit impacts us, how the Holy Spirit convicts us, how the Holy Spirit guides us. Week two, we talk about the heavenly language, the language of the Holy Spirit. We, thought, we looked about how speaking in tongues will build our lives up. Then third week, we saw about how we should not be ignorant of the spiritual gifts the Spirit of God has blessed the body of Christ with some gifts and says, Paul says, do not be ignorant of that. And week four, we saw how we should earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. And Paul says, especially that you may prophesy. And he spoke of what prophecy is all about, how prophecy should bring edification, exhortation, and comfort. And week five, last week, saw how Paul, when he said, pursue love, love is also a part of of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And today we are week six, and I want to draw your attention to another passage from Ephesians chapter five, reading from verse 15. Ephesians chapter five, reading from verse 15, it says like this. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, and making music to the Lord in your hearts, and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, particularly, that's what we're going to dwell on today. It's called, verse 18 says, Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. Now, we are all people who always want to be filled. We're always looking for places where we can fill ourselves. Okay? You're always looking for the restaurants where they can give you food that can fill you up. If one restaurant gives you only a certain amount of things for one price, and another restaurant gives you for the same price some, some more items, you want to go there. Right? Because you're going to fill up. You look at social media everywhere around, okay? There's always constantly you are filling yourselves with. Then comes music, okay? You're constantly filling. It always constantly filling your emotions. Then comes relationships, okay? They try to fill you up with something, okay? But all of this, if you look at all of this, they don't last, they don't last very much. They have a limited period of time, okay? Anybody, uh, whoever ate something, you know, some people do like this, okay? They have a full meal, a hearty meal, and you are at a point where you can't even another morsel, and you say, I'm done. I have, I have my f tummy full. But half an hour later, you'll come back and take another bite of whatever is left over there, right? Because we are always constantly trying to fill our lives with something. And Paul is here in saying something. He says, you got to be filled. You got to be filled with something. So Paul, writing this letter, he's encouraging the church. Ephesians says, hey, hey, when you live your lives, live as people who are wise. Don't live like fools. Don't act foolishly. Right? Live as people who are wise. And in the midst of the giving this discourse, he drops a bombshell. Right? He says something which is uncharacteristic probably of Paul. 
Okay, Paul, we know who wrote one third of the New Testament, right? And for him to say this statement looks like, uh, it's not that not a great statement. He goes on to make this statement in verse 18. It says, don't be drunk with wine, which will bring you to ruin, all right? But instead, let the Spirit fill your life. Now, Paul is writing this. He says, he puts this up, okay, which is, looks like very disrespectful, disrespectful, right? Paul, come on. Of all the analogies, of all the comparisons that you could take, how could you, how could you talk about God, the Holy Spirit, to and compare it to what the wine can do? Come on. You're bringing God, the Holy Spirit, to a lower level. Definitely looks like that, okay? But Paul is not writing this randomly. He knows what he's saying, okay? He's a smart guy. He's a very learned guy. And he's encouraging the Ephesian believers to say, hey, don't be drunk with wine. But instead, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this instruction, okay, can cause some tension in our lives because some of us people are here, oh, I've never touched alcohol. What is he talking about? How can Paul do that, right? Paul do that, okay. Let me ask you some, one question here. How many of you have found yourself or someone totally drunk? Come on, lift your hand. Well, at least we got some honest people here today. In the first service, nobody lifted up their hands. And some of us are struggling to do that because the Holy Spirit is going to confront that to you today. Are you are shy to lift up hands today, but the Holy Spirit is going to confront us today on that aspect. And Paul says here, don't be drunk with wine, which will bring to ruin. And says, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone, we want to be filled with something. Filled with something right now. You go through different seasons in your life where you feel empty, drained out. But I want to tell you, you are never empty. You're always filled with something or the other. Something or the other. And Paul is talking to us today and says, don't be drunk with wine. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I have to tell you, I have to acknowledge another pastor for this illustration, okay? Now some of your mouths are watering already. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Paul is saying something over here. He's saying, don't be drunk with this thing. Have you imagined or have you noticed when people get a hold of it, people down some, at least a half of the bottle. All right. It changes them in a way that they don't act when, before having that. It changes their lives all the time. There is nobody probably in this room who after holding that liquor, getting that liquor into your system and stand up well. Right? It doesn't happen, right? You know, why do people drink? Why do people drink alcohol? Some people say, I want to get drunk. I want to get drunk. Right? Some people say, you know, you know, uh, I'm so much in trouble. I want to relax a little bit. Different people have different reasons for drinking, okay? There is an emptiness deep inside, and you're always trying to find something that will fill that void in your life. Something that will satisfy you. Looking, searching. Some people search in alcohol to find peace, a contentment, a relaxation. I have so many problems. When I get drunk, I feel comforted and I feel at ease. And my problems seem to disappear. They don't disappear. They don't disappear, by the way. Like, seem to disappear. 
Uh, alcohol gives me peace, comforts me. People drink alcohol for many reasons. When people are drunk, what do they say? They are drunk. So there's a terminology that they use for people who drink and drive. They say DUI, driving under influence. When you, when you have Have this in your life. It will influence you in different ways. It will influence you in different ways. People who have that or are addicted to that, they can't be normal. Okay, if you get filled with that spirit, it influences you, right? It influences you in ways. It influences you the way you talk, the way you walk and the way you act. Am I right? Come on, someone agree with me? Yes, great. You guys are all agreeing with me. The first service didn't do that. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It influences you in the way you act, the way you walk, and the way you talk. Right? And Paul here compares and saying, hey, don't be drunk with this thing. Right? You can see it up on our bigger screens too. Don't be drunk with that thing. But he says something like that. He says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are under the influence of this, it, inf it changes you. It changes the way you walk, changes the way you talk, changes the way you act. And it's the same thing that will happen when you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You know, John Stott says something like this. He said, a person who is drunk, we say, is under the influence of alcohol, and certainly a spirit-filled Christian is under the influence and power of the Holy Spirit. If excessive alcohol dehumanizes, turning a human being into a beast, the fullness of the Spirit makes us more human, for he makes us like Christ. And Paul compares, he says, don't be drunk with wine that will bring you to ruin. So many families are ruined today because of this. Come on, so many people have become abusers. So many husbands abuse their wives under the influence of alcohol. I'm talking to people coming to church today. Some of you abuse your wives today under the influence of that. And that's what Paul says, it will bring you to ruin. And that's what we see happen. So many young people's lives are in ruins because they become influenced by that. They become influenced by that. Right here, sitting in the congregation, I know of people. But Paul says, hey, don't be drunk. Don't be drunk with that. He says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So just like what happens over there, the Holy Spirit also. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, He influences you in the way you walk, in the way you talk, and in the way you act. Spirits, both are spirits. Under this influence, this spirit, you will go to ruin. It will bring ruin. How many families are here today? are brought to ruin because of that influence. But Paul says here, hey, stop that. Instead he says, be filled. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So how we see how the Holy Spirit can affect our lives. Don't you see? Can't you see? Is it interesting that a substance in the world such a bad counterfeit of the real one. It's such a bad counterfeit of what spirit-filled life looks like that. 
right? So we'll see three things that the Holy Spirit can influence in our lives. Number one, he changes the way you walk. He changes the way you walk. Now, have you ever seen somebody filled with this spirit walk? Yeah? Maybe you've done that. And you don't even know about that. Have you ever seen somebody influenced with that spirit? How is their walk? And if you're driving and the police catches you, and they'll ask you to come out, come on. After your breath analyzer test, they'll say, walk in a straight line. And you think, ah, that's easy. I'm, I'm doing it all the years of my life, walking in a straight line. That's not easy. So they start off. Study. Try to put one foot. They cannot walk straight. That makes your walk crooked. Crooked. But this, this doesn't make your walk straight, by the way. It will make your walk Christ-like, by the way. Come on. It's not going to help you to make walk straight. It's going to make your walk Christ-like. So Paul says, don't be drunk with wine, which is going to bring ruin. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're walking like Christ walks. Come on. Somebody needs to walk like Christ walks here today in this congregation. It says, he will change the way you walk. Your walk will become Christ-like. And the second thing we see that he not only changes the way you walk, but he also changes the way you talk. Have you ever seen people talking under the influence of this? What kind of speech do they have? Come on. You know, people under the influence, they just keep babbling and babbling and babbling, right? If you're an elderly person and they're under the influence, they'll talk about their past. I was like this. It was good like that. They can't stop talking about that. Right? Some people don't even have control of what they are saying. Right? And they say something and later someone tells them, hey, you said something like this. I said, did I? And you don't even know. You don't even know. You are in no control of your speech. That's what this makes you. Lose your control. It doesn't help you to talk properly. Talk properly. Under the influence, you know, we say things which are not to be said, you know. Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Okay, it says, don't use foul or abusive language. Come on, how many of you are using the foul and abusing language under the influence of that? On your spouses, on your kids, come on. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. How our words can be encouragement? When you are filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, your talk will be different. Instead of cursing, you'll speak blessing. That's the way the Holy Spirit will help you to talk. Instead of posting rubbish on the social media, come on. You post encouragement on social media. Instead of posting and you regret it later, ah, and you can't do anything about that. When you fill with the Holy Spirit, he will give you the Christ talk. Christ talk. Interesting thing about social media is one person puts their story, 101 people like and comment on their story without even knowing the other side of the story. Come on, so many of you have done that. I know it. That's not how 
the Holy Spirit wants to, to talk. And Paul says, you have no control. You know, can I tell you something? So many of us don't have a problem with this. But we always have a problem with this. Here you have no control. But when it comes to here, you always want to have control. And the Bible says, God gives you a language to speak called tongues. And it says you, cannot, you can't understand it. But what we do? We want to understand it. Huh? We want to be in control. Whereas over here, you, you are not even in control. But somehow when it comes to this, we want to be in control. Come on, what are we saying? How can we even compare that? Just don't be under this influence because it's not going to control the way you talk. It says be influenced by the Holy Spirit. It will help you to be talking like Christ talks. And the third thing, changes the way we walk, changes the way we speak, and the third thing is it changes the way we act. Changes the way we act. I've seen people filled with that Right? And do things that they never do normally. They don't do that normally, but under that influence of that, they are something else. Imagine, this guy is shy, quiet, but a couple of pegs down that, he thinks he can conquer the world. Come on. Somehow he gets this courage. Okay? And he wants to have a fight. And he doesn't care. Have you seen it? people fighting when they're drunk? Right? Even the other guy is huge and tall. This guy who's drunk, he thinks he can overpower that guy. Somehow thinks he has the courage to do that. Have you seen this? Guys who don't have the courage to speak, go and speak to a girl. Under the influence of that, they somehow they think they'll have the courage. It will make you act against what you act normally. And Paul says here, don't be drunk with wine. Okay, don't be drunk with wine. Say, and say instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will act like Christ acts. You will act like Christ acts. That's what Paul is trying to get. Talking about it says, hey, don't be drunk with wine. It is going to bring to your ruin. But it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the thing that happens when you are under the influence of this is it is dominating you. It's dominating you. It's controlling everything you do. And what happens when you have this as your influence is going to ruin your life. And, but instead, Paul says, instead, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit also will empower you to live a life that is pleasing to him. Pastor David spoke about it in the communion and says, how can I get out of that sinful life? He says, the only way you can do that is when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that's our goal, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, okay, you'll start being generous. That's how you act. Generous to people that you swore you're never going to give them. You'll start praying for people that, were, that you were hating. Okay? Slowly, the Spirit of God will dominate your life. And that's the command of God. Remember in Genesis chapter 2, when God created Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, have dominion. That's what he says. And the only way we can have dominion is, my friends, when we are living under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it changes your life. That's why Paul says, don't be filled with wine, because that will bring ruin. You will instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what does it say to us? 
say to us, don't be filled with shame, which will bring you to ruin. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't be filled with hate, because that's going to bring ruin in in your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't be filled with low self-esteem because that will never allow you to come up. But instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't be filled with lust because that will bring ruin into your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't be filled with pornography. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul says, there is something better. There is something better. This will give you temporary. It's not giving you life. It's draining your life. But he says, Holy Spirit, it's going to build your life. It's going to build your life. And he's encouraging them, say, stop looking to that. Start looking to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You see, I, I told you, we are always filled with something. We are always filled with the wrong things in our lives. And today, you may make a cho- you and I make a choice to stop filling ourselves with wrong things and start filling ourselves with the real things. Real things. And he's encouraging us, don't be drunk with wine. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So my question for all of us here today, what are you filling yourself with? What are you filling yourself with? Every weekend, go there, Sunday morning you come here. What are you filling yourself with? Are you ruining your life or are you building your life? It says, be filled. Now that word, be filled, in the original Greek, has four, four understanding, connotations. Number one, be filled is a command. It's a command. It's not saying, be filled if you want to. Be filled if you like to. No, it's not saying that. It's just as simple as be filled. It's a command of God. It's not giving you a choice. It's a command, okay? Number one, it's a command. And the second thing about this is, it needs your cooperation. It needs your cooperation. You know, in the Greek, the verb is a passive verb. It's a passive voice. Okay, I'm not an English teacher, but, you know, scholars talk about it like this. It's okay. In verbs, there are two voices, active and passive, Right? The term that's used is a passive voice. What is the difference? When I use an active voice, I'll say like this, I'll hit the ball. If it's a passive voice, I say, the ball hit me. So when Paul writes it, in the original, it talks about a passive voice, which means that it needs your cooperation. You don't have to be filled You don't have to do to be filled. All you have to do is cooperate with the Holy Spirit and allow him to fill and take over your life. That's what it says. The only job you have to do is open your hearts, open your lives, and receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So it requires our cooperation. God's not a guy. Holy Spirit is not a guy. He's going to push it on you. He's a gentleman. He doesn't push it on you. Instead, he says, if you open your lives to me, if you allow your, me to work in your life, I will make sure that you walk like Christ, you talk like Christ, and you act like Christ. The third thing, it's not for one person, my friend. Be filled is not for one person. It's not talking to one person. It's talking to many people. So it's not limited to one person. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. It should be a common, it's a common thing for everybody. And finally, it also talks about conti- continuity. Sorry, continuity. Continuity. The understanding we feel here is that is not a one-time thing. It's not a one-time thing. It's a continual filling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Continual filling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's what, that's what it talks about. Be filled 
Okay? It's not something in the past. It's not something in the future. It is now. It's in the present tense. It's not in the past or the future tense. It's in the present. It says, be, feel, now. So it's not something, oh, I experienced the Holy Spirit. Okay, no. But are you experiencing it now? Is the question. Are you allowing yourself to be filled by the Holy Spirit? That's the question you and I need to ask. So many different translations talk about that, okay? Ephesians 5, 18 in the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation says like this. It says, don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled continually, okay? Continually with the Holy Spirit. The Amplified says like this. Do not get drunk with wine, for this is debauchery, but ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. It gives us an understanding. This is not a one time. But it's a continuous experience. That you and I need to have in our lives. When you go to a pub. And you go to the bartender. And ask him to give you. Wine. Or some liquor. How does he give it to you? Does he give it to you in a big glass? No? Does he give you a big glass? Does he give you a full bottle? What does he do? He'll give you a shot on a smaller glass. He says, okay, drink this first and come back later if you want more. And this is the same thing in our lives. So many times we are all about shots. Let me explain to you what I mean. You come on Sunday morning, you get a shot of the Holy Spirit. Oh, this feels good. That song, full anointed. That preaching was full anointed. <clears throat> you get a shot. And the week goes by. Next Sunday you come again. <clears throat> you get another shot. That's not what Paul is talking about over here. He's talking not a shot. He's talking about a river. Of the spirit of God flowing in your life. And it only will happen when you go to God every day. And say, Lord, fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Not only on a Sunday morning, on a Sunday night. But every day of your life you go before God and say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. How do we do that? We read your Bible. We pray. We speak encouraging words. When you do that, you are filled with your Holy Spirit. And when you open yourselves to the Holy Spirit for his work to in our lives, then the way you act will change. The way you walk will change. The way you talk will change. And we become Christ-like. And that's what Paul was getting at. And he says, don't be drunk with wine, which is going to bring ruin and damnation in your life. Instead, it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe some of you are here today. You need to stop doing that. And instead, start doing this. It's a continual experience. Maybe you have encountered, filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, don't stop at that. You know? It's time to take another drink. Another drink. Every day. People do that every day, right? Before going to bed, you need to have something. Instead of that, why don't you try the Holy Spirit? I'll tell you, it will bring a remarkable difference in your life. It's a challenge for each one of us. Is, what are you filling yourselves with? Are you becoming crooked? Are you becoming Christ? Come on, close your eyes. Come on, let that thought sink into your hearts today. How is your life today? Who is influencing you? What is influencing you? Who is influencing you today more? Who is influencing you more today? Come on, you look into your lives. Even as you look into your lives, you know, I want to give an opportunity for anyone who never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, the things that I'm talking about, living under the influence of the Holy Spirit, it all starts 
by receiving Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, asking him to forgive you of all your sins and asking him to cleanse you with his precious blood. That's the first step of living under the influence of God. So maybe you are here, you never received Jesus, never asked him to come into your life. I want to give you an opportunity today. As every eye is closed, every eye is closed. Okay, you don't want to look in around. If that is you, I want you to lift up your hands. If that is you, I just want you to lift up your hands. Come on, anyone out there says, I need to receive Jesus today as my Lord and Savior. Come on, anyone. Anyone out there in this congregation? Thank you. I see that. Anyone out there? Anyone out there? Before I pray, I'll tell you, this is one of the greatest decisions you'll ever take in your life. Your life will be changed because of this decision. Anyone else? Thank you. Come on. All those who have lifted your hands, I want to lead you in a small prayer of faith and commitment to God. And at Hope Unlimited Church, we believe in the family praying together. So family, come on, let's pray this prayer along with people who are receiving Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Come on, let's pray this. Come on, louder. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive all my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood. Jesus, I believe in you with all my heart and confess you with my mouth. Come live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for those people. Oh, God, I pray a blessing, revelation, understanding of what they are doing today, oh, God. 